Hey, so tonight I'm talking about my uh, favorite entry, current favorite entry into the Halloween franchise. Halloween 3 I discovered not that many years ago and I kept coming back to it once each year and this month I've watched it for about fourth or fifth time and I gotta say each time this movie has uh, opened itself up to me a bit more and now I feel like I'm really beginning to understand its greatness and it's growing on me. I was kind of prejudiced against this movie originally because of the director. The name Tommy Lee Wallace brings up in my memory automatically an early experience watching the TV version of Stephen King's It, which as a kid I remember distinctly remember being crap. And ever since I uh, sort of memorized Tommy Lee Wallace equals crap. However, now I'm slowly working through this and realizing that I may have been not quite right and uh, Tommy Lee Wallace in fact is a creative person and uh, imaginative uh, director and this movie here Halloween 3 is a uh, proof of that. The plot of Halloween 3 is the total outlier in terms of um, this uh, saga. I only really like the first uh, three movies in the series so I would like to think of Halloween as a kind of an odd trilogy where there is the original movie then the, the first sequel which is pretty much a remake of the original movie and then there is the third part which uh, takes things into a different dimension and whatever came after that was more or less just a rehash of the first film again. Halloween 3 follows the structure of a typical uh, murder mystery plot where we have an investigator figure that we are confronted with mystery in fact the opening 10 minutes or so build up this mysterious assassin uh, figures these uh, robotic assassins and then the medic at the hospital uh, played by the great Tom Atkins uh, he's mystified how come a man walks into my ward and kills a, a patient in the night and then uh, blows himself up in the car. What is all this about? Nobody seems really bothered. So Tom Atkins's character together with the victim's daughter they uh, go off on a trip together to this uh, toy factory in, in a town called uh, Santa Mira. The main character Dr. Chow is played by Tom Atkins. He's this kind of medic who's uh, got a failed marriage, he's separated and his wife is played by Nancy Loomis, the amazing actress. Every time I see her pop up in one of the Car Carpenter productions, I'm just so pleased to see her. Dr. Chalice is this uh, drinking womanizing kind of intrepid investigator doctor. And this whole movie is, is an excuse for him to have another uh, fling with this uh, younger girl. And the story is... Um, very different from other Halloween movies in that um, we, we have a different approach, we have a different universe here, free from uh, Michael Myers's presence and uh, it's somehow a little bit more of a um, fairy tale ambience also with these masks in the film with the uh, famous Halloween uh, masks. There is a certain fairy tale quality to, to the film which I enjoy. It still has the typical John Carpenter stamp on it in terms of uh, there is lots of that ro roving lighting, Steadicam, unforgettable sounds, courtesy of Alan Howarth. What a magnificent score. When the film just opens with those uh, images of this uh, pumpkin being shown on this old uh, old TV screen and flashing and you hear that score and the first 10-12 minutes of the movie they are driven by this music as the mystery solidifies as we're kind of getting hooked into the story the music almost never ends and once we're in there the music lets up for a while so the middle of the movie there isn't as much wall-to-wall -wall synth attack music as in the beginning you may notice. There are also great panoramic shots of uh, California sort of they shot it somewhere by the coastline, I think. And then the villain of the... I think it's the same actor who was the baddie in, uh, in the follow-up to the Westworld movie. 
and he's at the beginning he kind of comes across as this uh, almost like like a cheesy Irish version of Mr. Burns from The Simpsons so he's kind of obviously not a nice guy but he's obviously blatantly ridiculous and he plays the part on the on the verge of being really cheesy but then as the movie progresses and we learn of his crazy plan how he's gonna uh, mess mess up Halloween for everybody in the States and in the world possibly he takes on a, a more sinister dimension and the way this actor Dan O'Hurley here the way he's framed the way he, his delivery suddenly changes to a lot more earnest it's fantastic so he's a great villain he's this uh, respectable figure very very powerful in the community but super sinister at the same time Halloween 3 season of the witch is a kind of a Trojan horse movie I only recently realized why why and that's because Ni uh, Nigel Neal the British author of the Quatermass TV and film uh, series was involved with writing this uh, uh, Halloween 3 even though he's not credited you can tell some of that uh, message which is uh, th this message really clearly breaks away from what the first two movies were uh, communicating there is actually some kind of a social conscious to Halloween 3 and it's very relevant today like in the story you see the 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 first victim in the film this guy who gets attacked by those uh, robotic assassins he runs a joke shop and his joke shop is kind of going out of business because of the malls so in that in that time frame early early 80s the malls were kind of crushing small businesses the corporate was killing uh, the small you know the little guy the small businesses and look what's happened today today pretty much Amazon has killed the malls Amazon has killed pretty much the world and isn't paying taxes so yeah you keep shopping at Amazon boys and girls keep shopping at Amazon so there is that message which also the way the assassins are shown they're kind of shown more like government guys really they have these boring dull gray suits on and they have those conventional hairstyles so it's a movie which is has that edge of paranoia and there is always CCTV and cameras so it has that edge the surveillance which must have been a very new thing back then whereas now we're so used to being um, seen we actually we actually broadcast ourselves right we actually uh, go 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 ahead and make our own channels and put out videos and po po posts out, out there for everyone to see so the idea of invasion of privacy I think was still a lot more chilling in, back in back when Halloween 3 uh, came out the movie has its shortcomings some some of the story aspects are a little unclear and others are quite implausible I will not dwell on those because they do not outweigh the film's uh, successes for me it conjures up a great atmosphere it's a very original step away from the Michael Myers formula and there is just some dark energy to this movie which really surprises me and the way they smuggled in this subversive message into a big budget movie which had uh, Nigel Neal made this at home in black and white this would have been just a minor British cult item but the way you know Dino Del Rey just picked it up and it sold everywhere in the world Halloween 3 it wasn't a super hit but it's still it's a legitimate part of this uh, saga and this way this movie is uh, part of this pantheon and that message is out there for people to pick up on which I really liked uh, you know the first couple of times I watched Halloween 3 like I said I was a bit more prejudiced and I grudgingly considered yeah it's got a couple of cool kills it's got one magnificent steady cam long tracking shot so it has things going for it but I wasn't ready to admit how much of a brilliant movie it is in terms of what it's trying to say that's the only Halloween movie which besides trying to scare you also wants to warn you you know in the beginning of the movie this this first victim he runs in he says they're gonna get us all they're gonna kill us all and if you follow up the message who they are it's very interesting so I'll leave that up to you when you're rewatching Halloween 3 try and figure out who is they and what exactly are they killing what they're after so yeah that's me reading plenty into this uh, fantastic film I was really pleased for this occasion to revisit uh, Halloween 3 uh, 
season uh, of The Witch. Did I mention the cool music by Alan Howarth? What a brilliant driving score, I love it. So that was day 29 of 31 Days of Horror. Thanks for watching.